Hi, I started growing lilies some 30 to 40 years ago. And uh, I, uh, mostly Asiatics, Asiatic types. And then uh, about 20, just over 20 years ago, I heard about Mardigons. And uh, I, uh, with a, a family to support, uh, I found Mardigons very expensive. The cheapest Mardigon I bought was $25. I paid a $35 for one. And I even had to travel a distance to buy a, a Larissa, to be honest. And it cost me $45. Now, this was over 20 years ago. And in today's terms, that's something like between $70 and, and $110 or $120 a bulb in today's money terms. I figured, well, there must be easier ways of growing mardigans because the ways I was, was, was taught was slow. You, you put scales in, you took them out, you took the bulbs off the old scales, you planted them out individually. Hey, I wanted to find ways of growing them, mass producing them cheaply so that mardigans, instead of being expensive lilies, would be about the price of Asiatic lilies. Perhaps some of them are slower than others and maybe a little more expensive. But I have now I've sold mardigans at two for five dollars, depending on easy ones, and maybe five dollars each. And that's a long way down. That's comparable in price to Asiatic lilies. And this is an example. This one is, is Brunswick. And it's very easy. And if you look, there's about 50 Mardigan seedlings in that one five-inch pot. And they'll get planted out in about a month or so. By My methodology allows them to have 12 weeks of growth instead of the normal or, let's say, usual six to eight weeks of growth. So they mature much faster. Now, that's Brunswick. And if you want to look, this one is... It's Gold Tower. Now, there's a bit of an anomaly here. This was a small bulb I put in there as well with the scales when I was doing the scales. That, that's a new one of mine. It's called Gold Tower. Now, this one, for example, uh, it's quite an easy one to grow again. This one's called Big Deal. And uh, it's a new yellow, buttercup yellow lily. And uh, that. And now some are harder to grow. Now, Megan Evans was a show winner a few years back. And look what happened to Megan Evans. Some t Mardigans can be temperamental. I may have picked the wrong bulb or bulbs. And it could have been a contamination there. Even though I did treat them, it failed. And not completely in all of them, but here's another Megan Evans here. It says, Megan too, I've got some. So that's not compared to this because I may have taken the bulbs at the wrong time or whatever. And just to show you, this, this is Ramona. Now, Ramona is not an, uh, the easiest, but it will multiply quite easily. It's a nice lily, but it's a slower growing one. So Mardigons, some grow fast, some grow slow. And this is one of my fastest in honor of my many trips to Iowa. This is Iowa corn. It is a very fast, vigorous, yellow, orange speckled lily. It looks like corn. The key to, at least the method I use, is peat moss, of course, not perlite or vermiculite, but peat moss. I've got some dry peat moss here. I would say perhaps this peat moss is a little bit on the moist side, so if it's overly moist as it comes sometimes, you need to put a little of the dry peat with it. And now I've got the peat in here at the right consistency. And don't forget, uh, peat is acidic. It's got a pH of about 3 or 3.5, which is quite acidic. And this knocks out or prevents bacteria. Actually, it prevents uh, rotting. In other words, peat is preserved, pickled, if you want to call it, compost. It is natural nature's compost, and I've got that you now the right consistency. I squeeze it hard, and it's barely moist. That's perfect peat. Now, I will now be scaling the mardigans. I'm quite rough with them, and, and I will look at the scales, and I will discard any that look obviously damaged. And, or 
not they don't look that good I'll take them out and the older ones and I will take the the better looking scales and you know I'm not murdering the bulb people say take a few scales off the bulb well I'm taking about half its energy off so it's not going to kill the bulb that bulb has been scaled heavily it's not going to kill it and I will look through these scales now and discard the older, maybe more damaged scales. And I look at them and eh, they're in pretty good shape. So I will put my scales in here. Now I can put the fungicide in there and um, I can then put this lid on. This fungicide is Ridomil. Now people get paranoid but tell me why do farmers live to great old ages with handling pesticides? I mean this 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 actual pesticide is used often on crops. Uh, we eat quite a bit of fungicide actually because we have to because of disease. Now I put them in layers like so Put another layer in here. I do generally do three layers and put them out, spread them out. I do use a fungicide perhaps, but I don't have to. But it's a nice, maybe an extra precaution. But now I have this thing done just nicely right up the top. And the plants are in there. And then I get the label here at the top. I'm calling this one, uh, let's say, Moon Yin. I'll put five Moon Yins, and maybe the date is, say, uh, say it should have been October 1st. Now, these are sealed. Unlike a bag which buckles and bends and moves around, these are sealed in here tight. Now, to remember... Oxygen can actually pass through plastic. How much through this thick a plastic, I don't know. But water vapor can't. But even so, there will probably be some finite leaks in here, especially in dry houses in the winter. So what do I do? I ensure that these go in 50, 40 or 50 at a time into my inner blue bag. And my inner blue bag goes inside, it looks a little messy, inside my, it's tight, I tie the inner blue bag up the top. And I may have, say, 30, 40 or 50 uh, containers inside this one bag. So it is a double bag and it's inside a container. And this is then, put in a warm room, in my instance, a downstairs bathroom, at 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about 20 to 22 degrees or 24 degrees Celsius, and it's, it gets three months, October, November, December, three months of warm temperatures. I check them periodically, but by January the 1st, I put these in a cold garage that's close to freezing or just about freezing. If I don't have a garage available, I put them in a refrigerator, an old extra refrigerator, and they go in that fridge for three months. Three months of chilling close to zero. Sometimes the temperature drops below zero. And at the end of three months of chilling, I might let the temperature rise a little or pull them out of the fridge. And you'll see inside, you'll see shoots and growth and lots of roots inside here. So you'll see the roots in here, the successful ones. The unsuccessful ones will look blank. I take the lids off, like so. And you'll see roots and shoots in there. Now what I do is I get sunshine number four. It's a mix of, of peat moss and perlite in particular with a wetting agent. Now wetting agent allows the soil to pick up moisture. 
Now I put this in here, and then I take this top. And don't forget now this should be a mass of roots, and I do it quickly. Drop it in like that. This uh, sunshine peat moss, I'll fill it up just nice and tight. And this now goes into a tray. And when it's moist, and I will show you then, I've got two varieties in this tray that was put together in mid-March. And look at the growth. You can almost say, martagons galore. So that's my method, if you want to call it, for uh, propagating martagons. And I will put these out in the garden about the middle to late May when frost is gone. And I will plant these out in the garden. I'll just take them out of the pot, tip them, put them straight down in the garden so they're just below the soil surface. And I'll put them in a row, all munins. All, each pot will only be a few inches apart. So I have rows a meter apart, just massed with mardigons. And believe it or not, they'll size up, they'll grow nicely. And instead of having six to eight weeks to grow, they have May, June, and July to grow outside. Now, you take opportunity if you're planting mardigons and the scales break off, put the scales on the bulb, They'll come up, they'll grow. You can multiply them that way. You help them along. Thank you.